Welcome to Gearhead Country. I'm your host Ian Rome and we are at the 2014 Boot Hill Country Jamboree and I'm here with Chris of Doc Walker. Walker. Finally, yeah. welcome. It's been a, been a long, long time. It the has. First, it first has. time we met was Rocket Girl video back in 2003. Yes. Yes, you guys did very well with that video. Yeah, the video, very well with that song. Yeah, the video was 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 great. It was a lot of fun. It was a bunch of old cars. So for me, I'm losing my mind. I, it was hard for me to go on camera and sing because I was too busy looking at all the cars. And we had a good time. That yeah. was again 11 years ago. Hard yeah, to believe. 11 years ago, yeah. Hard to believe. And then shortly after that, we went down. Uh, do you remember the Mike Bullard show? Yeah, the Mike you Bullard show. That? Yeah, we, yeah. Went, we went down as the Car Club and had a. Yeah. I've got that all on video too. Got yeah. that off of CTV. And yeah. No, it's it's been it's well. been a lot of fun. I mean, the Rocket Girl video was a interesting video with a lot of cool cars, a cool diner, and uh, the storyline of the video was my love interest at the time was um, was a waitress, <laughs> and uh, it's amazing how. Over the years, you get to meet so many people that were in so many videos. The new record we did, the engineer says to me, he goes, Chris, yeah, yeah, my daughter was in one of your videos. I'm like, which one? She was Rocket Girl. She was a waitress. I'm like, no way. So, you know, it's amazing, you know, seeing you here later. It's, yeah. just, it's just, you know, you do a video and you see how, you know, far it spreads. Yeah. And I think you had mentioned that the uh, the cook is a yeah. The, one of our one of the guys in the car club. Yeah. Tom Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. And he uh, he got a lot of exposure out of that. Oh yeah. yeah. He did a good guy. job. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah. He did. Like, yeah. I remember Ted Ellis said, you know, he asked me, do I know anybody who could fit that part of being the short order cook? Yeah. I said, yeah, I got the guy. There he is. We didn't yes. tell him. Just when he showed up to do the shoot, he yeah. said, Ted took him aside and said, oh, you got a, I got a special job for you. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Okay, and again, tons of fun. Tons well, of fun. well, cheers to the uh, indeed. Yeah, you guys are doing fantastic. The music in the busy. last little while, yeah, busy. Yeah. You're you're here, there, you're everywhere. Yeah. You are. You have the reputation of being one of the most hardworking bands in all of Canada as far as touring and shows that never stop. Well, it's it's not necessarily. I'm not saying we don't work, but I mean when you love what you do, it, it's hard to call it work, but. Um, you know, when we're not playing, we're recording, yeah. or we're writing, or we're doing photo shoots, or we're doing videos. So it's it's a constant thing, and and you know anybody in this industry that is still in this in industry knows that it just takes a lot of work and a lot of dedication. Yep. I mean, if you want to talk about the difference between putting a band together or building a car, I mean it's it's a lot the a lot a lot the same thing. It's it's dedication and a lot of time and a lot of patience. And uh, you know, just trying to find the right people to help you in the right times, yep. and that's that's the main thing. Is just you got to keep at it. If you don't, then you know, you're gonna go by the wayside. Yeah. Now you guys have got, I would say, in my estimate, probably about eight to ten songs that I feature on Gearhead Country okay. because I know you guys, you're big car guys. M more so you, as you said, yeah. Dave. Dave's not really a big car guy. No, no, he, he drives a VW. Yeah. <laughs> But he appreciates cars. He, does. he likes cars. Yeah, he but, does. But you're you're the car guy in yeah. the band, and like I said, you've got so many good videos and so many good songs that we feature on Gearhead Country, like "I'm Coming Home." Yeah. You know, half the stuff off of uh, you know most of your album. Yeah. There's, there's always a car song in there. It's gotta be because that's all we do is travel. I yeah. mean, our life is the road. Yeah. Rocket yeah. Girl. Uh, yeah. Just lots, yeah. lots and lots of yeah. good stuff. So, since this is Gearhead Country. Give us, give us a, a story. A, a good, a good story. A, a good, a I've good got a good. I was, yeah, a good I was telling you earlier. Story. I've got a good story because I've always been a huge '57 Chevy fan. Yeah. Now I know you have a '56, but yeah. I'm a '56, '57 fan. And uh, I used to draw it all the time when I was a kid. And my dad and I, when I was about 12 years old, we went looking for uh, for old cars in around Manitoba down 16 Highway, and we come across this bush line that had an old car in it. So. We walked to the bush and it was, wasn't that nice, so we're walking back to the house and the guy goes, well, you should see what my son has in the garage. I'm like, okay. So we go to the garage and he opens the door and I just saw the two flags and the 57 Chevy Black Widow was in there. And I got a picture beside it, but I didn't get a picture of the flag. So everybody I told for years, yeah. I said, yeah, I saw a 57 Chevy ragtop, black, white, 
fuel injected. They're like, well, are you sure it was the fuel injected? I'm like, no, yeah, it was. They're like, nah, I don't know. So I told the story for years. Finally, last year, my dad and I, he's 74 years old now. Yeah. We took a drive and we found, we, did, we couldn't find where it was. But uh, we, we did talk to some people around there. And after about uh, six or seven hours of making phone calls, we found a guy that... Uh, his son knew about the car. Yeah. So we called his son and his son goes, yeah, the car was actually sent to Winnipeg in 57, the guy bought it new, and somehow ended up on 16 Highway in a barn. Somebody from Toronto found it, bought it, took it to Toronto, did a total restoration, and I think it sold, I'm not exactly what it sold for, but they took it to the Barrett-Jackson Auto yeah, auction, yes. auction and, and I think it was about $128,000, $132,000 it sold for. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. I uh, this guy told me, yes, it was a 1957 Chevy Black Widow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I still have a picture of me 12 years old standing beside it. <laughs> so I thought, I should look in the Barrett-Jackson. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that picture. Well, I, I, should, I should take the picture, find the Barrett-Jackson, or find the guy who bought it in the yeah. Barrett-Jackson, because you can go back and find yeah. out yep. previous oh, yeah. buyers. I should go... Uh, find out who bought it and just send him a, a couple CDs and a picture of me at 12 years old in front of this car and maybe he's one of those guys that are so rich he'll just go you know what you might as well just have it. <laughs> everybody can dream everybody can dream <laughs> <laughs> I have a dream one. Chris has yeah, a dream we all have a dream that, that's Chris's yeah, dream yeah, so, yes it is <laughs> Oh, wow. Awesome! No, I, no, I love that. That's, yeah. a, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. talk about the one that got away. Wow, like, oh. the one that's, and you know the guy goes. Uh, oh, and here's a, here's another one about this. My, I, I'm a Mopar guy. Yeah. So I go to the the garage in Westburn one. It's day. okay. Yeah, I can see the lobotomy scar. Yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> anyway, I go to the store one day, and there was this guy that grew up around Westburn. His name's Norbert Ragu, and uh, <laughs> I know it's a wacky name. He was kind of a shady dude that lived out in the country in a town of 50 people. <laughs> but he had a 1969 or 70, the Dukes of Hazard Charger. Yeah. And it was the 440 orange. Yeah. So I'm at the, the gas station on 16 Highway having a burger and fries one day. He comes into the store and he goes, i got to get out of town. I want to sell my car. I'm like, how much do you want? <laughs> and he goes, I don't know, like 1500 bucks. I'm like, so I go running home to my dad. I'm like, Dad, I need $1,500. No. I'm like, no, but I really need it this time. <laughs> no. He's like, no, but I really need it this Like, this is a good thing. He's like, no. Later, my dad's finally like, I probably should have given you the $1,500. <laughs> 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 1970 Dodge Charger 440 Magnum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was in amazing shape. So yeah. I've, I've been around cars my whole life. I'm a true uh, fan and, and passionate about cars. My mom has a... Uh, 67 uh, Thunderbird 428 with the suicide doors and I'm going to restore someday. So I love cars. I love building things. I love being in the shop. My wife, uh, I redid the shop and now I'll, my, my sister called my wife and said, well, you're like, uh, you're like my mother was. You're a shop widow now. So when I'm awesome. home and I'm bored, I'm, she's a shop widow. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how about... Uh, some, some simple gearhead question. What was your favorite car growing up as a kid? What was your favorite 57 TV? 57 Chevy. 57. Yeah. Your favorite TV or movie car? Oh, TV yeah. movie car would have been, well, Duke's a hazard car. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's where I got a, that. A big, a big staple there. Yeah. yeah that, that was a big one for me. Um, I'm never really a Corvette guy or anything, but although I did have, when I moved to Nashville, I moved to North Nashville, which is a lot of rednecks and hillbillies yeah. down there, and I got to be good friends with a car dealer, and we built a, a 1980 El Camino. Ah, I have an 81 myself. Yeah. So, yeah. so we Three. ordered it from Kentucky Mortars. We ordered a 350 with a with a bit of a juicy cam in it, and that's that's what I did when I should have been writing songs. I was rebuilding an El Camino. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very yeah. nice. So what? So project-wise, again, anything like for cars? Yeah, yeah. Well, for cars, I've got the the Thunderbird that I want to redo. Yeah, the, yeah, my dad yeah, bought yeah, a 1966 one. Dodge Polara, uh, and that's, that's the first car I ever drove in high school, which was a total boat. Loved it. Um, what's the What's the first? Well, how about the first car that you ever truly owned yourself? Owned was a. Yes. Oh God, what was that? Oh, it was a 1977. Oh, wait, wait, yeah, 
It was a Chevy. Yeah. It was uh, not a Monte Carlo. No, it was a it Malibu Carlo. Classic, 1977 Malibu, Malibu Classic with the seats that would turn sideways. Oh yeah, so the yeah. Costopedic interior. Yeah, yes. with the black with leather, the swivel yeah. seats. Yeah. Those headlights, though. Yeah. Man, I lived the turn on 16 Highway to where I was was t about 20, 25 miles away, and my dad was like, "Geez, I could always tell you were coming home. You'd turn down 16 Highway and put your brights on." <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun car. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Were well, you guys again? Yeah. Great songs. Thank you for uh, taking the time out and having you doing the interview. You got and again. What's coming up in the future for Doc Walker? Got a new record coming out now. Um, new single should be out in about in a couple in a couple weeks. Um, then back in writing. Just we're always writing and yeah. recording and playing and fixing cars yeah. and buses. I've got a bus tomorrow that I've got to change. A, I just found out tonight. It's showing up tomorrow and. I'm the lead singer slash mechanic, so um, yeah. So I, I I get a call from the bus driver tonight, and he blew a he blew a power steering hose on a 45 foot Prevo bus, and I guess it was right when he was coming around a corner. Oh, so yeah. he hit the curb and. Nice. So tomorrow we got to track down where that's it's so, never ending. So stay tuned. Maybe tomorrow, Gearhead Country Live will be fixing a bus with yeah, Doc Walker. It, yeah. you never know. Gearheads, Chris yeah, Doc Walker. Is that going all? Is that line go all the way to the back? Yeah, 45 feet. <laughs> 45 <laughs> feet. So all you guys that are fixing uh, hoses and cars, going, oh my God, I got to buy this much hose. I got 45 feet of hose to fix. And uh, these so, fine yeah, folks here. To bring you up to speed, Doc Walker's bus has had a little bit of an issue with the power steering. Yeah. With the power steering. So we're going to do what we do and try to help out the boys and try and fix you this bus You know what I love about tonight. this? I love about this, our bus driver, it blew in Pennsylvania. Yeah, Pittsburgh, no, Pittsburgh. It blew in Pittsburgh, and where are we? We're, again, we're in, uh, outside of Bothwell, Ontario. Ontario. So, so he far? drove that far with no power steering on a 45-foot bus, so he's like Arnold Schwarzenegger right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna figure out. I'm gonna get the diagnosis. We're doing reality TV now. <laughs> That's good.